Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the coming of the Elijah Spirit, who is the forerunner of the Lord. And in this class, I plan to quickly run down through a few of these slides discussing the imminent day of the Lord and the Elijah Spirit and how we can see a lot of these events in the year 2021. And even though I won't mention it in this video, many who are on watch for the rapture will be interested in this information as well. Since we're talking about the dates of the day of the Lord or the day of his wrath, pre-tribulation rapture watchers may want to pay particularly close attention. Now, like I said, I plan to run down through here pretty quickly, but you should be able to use the supporting verses on the screen. You may have to watch the video twice, maybe pause and read the verses. But my goal in this video is to go through these as quickly as I can, starting with the day of the Lord and how it falls in the year 2021 to the fall of the year 2023. Now, I admit that that would look a little strange covering two years, but you have to understand that that also includes the Jubilee year that will start in the fall of the year 2022. And Jubilees are important to this discussion as we read over in the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, understanding that when the father was talking about the 120 years, he was talking about 120 Jubilee cycles. But anyway, the first thing that we want to talk about is over in Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 8 and how it tells us that the day of the Lord is actually one year long. And we're going to talk about when it is to start here, but understand that from the start date, it will be about 364 days before the end of the so-called day of the Lord. So now let's talk about the 120th Jubilee. And what it has to do with the day of the Lord. Now looking over here in the epistle of the apostles verses 16 and 17. We see that the Messiah told his disciples that his return would come at the end of the 120th Jubilee. He even went on to tell them how it would come between the Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But we'll come back to that in a second. But first, let's understand when the 120th Jubilee cycle is. To do so, we have to reference the book called Jubilees in its last chapter. It tells us of the last scripturally known Jubilee cycle, which coincided with the crossing of the River Jordan. We find in Jubilee chapter 50 that that was actually the 50th Jubilee cycle. And we know that... The crossing of the River Jordan was in 1457 B.C. Now, the way we know that is that the scripture gives us dates from Adam's children, starting with Seth all the way through to Abraham. And then we're given dates of the Abrahamic covenant and the Exodus. And when we add all of these dates up, we end up in the year 1457 being the year that they crossed the River Jordan. So that would have been the beginning of the 50th Jubilee in 1457 B.C. But then when we come 30 Jubilees forward in time, we end up in the year 12 A.D. as the 80th Jubilee cycle, which means that the first advent of the Messiah was during the 80th Jubilee cycle. But now the Messiah was telling his disciples about the 120th Jubilee cycle. So we can figure this out from the last scripturally reported Jubilee cycle of 1457, which was the 50th Jubilee. Simply by adding 70 Jubilees, we end up in the year 1973 as the start of the 120th Jubilee cycle. So with this information, we can actually calculate the year of the day of the Lord to be between the fall of the year 2021 and the fall of the year 2022. We saw that the 120th Jubilee cycle started in 1973. And when we add 49 years to that, we end up in the fall of the year 2022. But what's important to understand is that this is actually the end of that sabbatical year. Just like if you would start on day one or Sunday and count seven days, you end up on day eight. 
or at the end of day seven. So it should be pretty easy to understand that the final year of the 120th Jubilee cycle will start in the fall of the year 2021 and end in the fall of the year 2022. So that would be the year long day of the Lord, according to what we read over in the epistle of the apostles. But it went even further to talk about when within that year would be the coming of the Messiah or the second advent. Now, we have to pay close attention to that book because in one translation, it says that the second advent would be between Pentecost and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. While in another translation, it says in the days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Pentecost. And in yet another translation, it says between Unleavened Bread and Pentecost. Now, I can't say for sure which one of these is actually correct. To me, it would make sense to be the last, which says between Unleavened Bread and Pentecost, only because Unleavened Bread comes before Pentecost. But I believe the first translation is the one that's more accurate, which says between Pentecost and Unleavened Bread. So I guess that's what the Messiah was talking about when he says nobody knows the day or the hour. But now all of that was talking about the day of the Lord. But in this video, what I want to draw your attention to is the return of Elijah. Because we read over in the book of Malachi in chapter 4 that Elijah, the prophet, is supposed to return before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So in other words, we're expecting his appearance to come first. We see in chapter 3 of that same book that this Elijah spirit would actually be the messenger of the covenant or the covenant angel. We also hear about this same covenant angel over in the book of the covenant in chapter 23 and verse 20. It is in that passage that we understand that this covenant angel is a promise to those who keep the covenant to help them survive the tribulation. So it will make sense that he will come before that great and dreadful day of the Lord. And that's particularly why we wanted to do this class to make sure that you are aware that this event will take place here sometime soon. Now, that's important for you to understand that the Elijah spirit will come first because scientists, doctors and government figures are fully prepared to give us other explanations for this event that is to take place in humanity. They're going to say things like 5G technology, Project Bluebeam, coronavirus, vaccines, aliens. They got all kinds of stuff to take our focus away from what actually has happened. But when you look in the book of Daniel in chapter 12, you see that what's actually going to happen is the archangel Michael, who would be that covenant angel, will stand up for his people before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. You see how it's talking about those found written in the book? It's important to understand that he's talking about the book of life. So the effects of these events will not be universal. Now digging deeper into the prophecies of Daniel and chapter 12, we see that they were also pointing to the year 2021. First understanding that Constantine the Great, the founder of the Catholic Church, took the reins of Christianity and started changing its times and laws in the year 306 A.D. And understanding from Daniel in chapter 9 that a time is equal to 490 years. So what Daniel was telling us in chapter 12 and verse 7 was that the church age would last from 306 A.D. until the year 2021. Even the prophecies given in Daniel chapter 12 verses 11 and 12 also point to the year 2021. If you understand that the 1,290 days as well as the 1,335 days actually means years and the daily sacrifice was taken away in 506 BC. When you do the math on this, you end up with the 
first prophecy of 1,290 days ending with the Dome of the Rock being placed on the Temple Mount as the abomination of desolation. And when you go another 1,335 days from that date of 685 AD, you end up in the year 2020. Actually, December the 25th of the year 2020, but you also have to understand that that would have been the start date for these events prophesied about and the end of that year would be December of the year 2021. So both of Daniel's prophecies in Daniel chapter 12 point to the year 2021. So now let's jump over and let's look how John's prophecy in the book of Revelations also points to the year 2021. Talking about that 1,260 days. Well, we understand that that actually started in the year 2017 when we had the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. If you remember, that event actually fell after Rosh Hashanah. And the next mandatory feast day would have been the Feast of Tabernacles. That would have been the time in which the bride was caught up to the Lord as they would have been keeping those statues known as the Feast of Tabernacles. We understand that it is extremely important to keep the feast days. In fact, that's how we repair the paths to dwell in, talked about in Isaiah chapter 58. But anyway, when we look at closely at the Feast of Tabernacles we see that the most important day of Tabernacles is the eighth day that is actually the day when they would have read the covenant in front of all of the people well when you look at that date in 2017 you see that it ended on October the 13th of 2017 now if you use that as the start date and you go 1260 days you end up on March the 26th of the year 2021 which is actually the 14th day of the first month and the beginning of that one day long celebration known as the Passover I'm not talking about unleavened bread you probably remember that those terms are used interchangeably unleavened bread is the mandatory week-long festival that people mean when they say Passover but there is another festival called Passover which is the communion festival which is actually prophesied to be the marriage supper that the Messiah was talking about when he was giving his disciples the bread and the wine you might want to go in and review the importance of that day as it seems like much of the world including the Jewish community ignores that day but since it appears as though this 1260 day prophecy is pointing to that day this very well could be the day of the return of the Elijah spirit but now like we said the epistle of the apostles left it unclear if it was talking about between the Pentecost and Passover or if it was talking about Passover to unleavened bread but when you look at the 1260 day prophecy as it would calculate from Hanukkah of the year 2017 it actually points to Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks in the year 2021 so if this return of the Elijah spirit is not a one day event, we can fully expect him sometime between Passover and Pentecost of the year 2021 and the return of the Lord being the following year, one year later. But anyway, tell me what you think down in the comment section of this video. Like I said, I wanted to get through this information quickly, so I'm going to abruptly end it there. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.